The day-long music festival known as Ellapalooza entertained the crowds at Orion Township's Wildwood Amphitheater while raising money for a great cause. Fall has officially arrived and Lake Orion residents were encouraged to celebrate the season with a family-friendly event at Cam Echowam. Galling Buick GMC hosted their final car cruise of the season. Dozens of classic cars, muscle cars, and hot rods came out for the Galling Super Cruise. And a fun event in downtown Lake Orion officially kicked off the Halloween season as an army of the undead roamed the streets and the village. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Throughout the summer, there has been no shortage of live music performances for Lake Warren residents to enjoy. Recently, the concert season came to an end with one last big blowout that also helps make the community more accessible. Well, I'm Saturday, September 17th, Orion Township's Wildwood Amphitheater was the site of Ellapalooza, an all-day family-friendly music festival that acts as a fundraiser for the Daisy Project Michigan. Beginning at noon, solo acts and bands performed throughout the day, including One Ton Trolley, Levi Bootcut, and The Straight Legs, The Gasoline Gypsies, and the 2XL Band. Vendors could be found on the grounds and visitors enjoyed a variety of food and refreshments. There was even a cornhole tournament sponsored by Motor City Cornhole. The money raised at the annual event helps make the community more accessible for those with special needs. So all the money that we raise for the DAISY project goes directly back into the community and we believe that um, fun is universal and that inclusion is expected. So we're doing things to make the world and recreational spaces more accessible for people with special needs because we want to make sure that everybody can have fun and play. The first Ellapalooza Music Festival took place in 2014 at Wildwood. Since then, some major improvements have taken place at Orion Township's Friendship Park. Okay, so we have uh, put in wheelchair swings and an inclusive whirl over at Friendship Park. We've also been instrumental and donated quite a bit of money to the Miracle League of North Oakland, which is also over at Friendship Park, which is an inclusive baseball field, um, so that everybody can have fun and play the game of baseball. If you missed Ellapalooza, it's not too late to contribute to the cause. Just visit the daisyprojectmi.com for more information. September 22nd marked the first day of fall and the crisp fall weather arrived right on time. Orion Township brought back a popular event that encouraged families to celebrate the season. On Saturday, September 24th, the Lake Orion community was invited to come out to Camp Agawam for the fall festival of family fun. The threat of rain early on did not discourage families from coming out, and the turnout was tremendous. People showed up at 1045 in the rain. They were ready to go. <laughs> they were not scared of the rain at all, and it turned out beautiful, so it's good. This is an amazing park for um, to have in our system. Um, it's very untouched, it's rustic. The, you know, it's a really great fall atmosphere here. Um, even in the summertime, it's a beautiful place to go. It's kind of a hidden gem in Orion Township. Um, when we took ownership of it a couple years ago, we wanted to keep it a large green space, and that is our goal, to not build anything on it, but just maintain it as a park and um, a piece of beautiful land. The rain transitioned to a perfect fall day and visitors enjoyed a petting zoo, crafts, inflatables, food, and music. A hay wagon ride took families to a pumpkin patch where the little ones were able to grab a fall souvenir. And thanks to the voter-approved Parks Millage, the entire event was free to the community. So um, with our Parks Millage, we are, our goal is to offer, I think, at least three large free events throughout the year. Um, this is one, Summer Sizzle, another one. All of our summer concerts are free to the public. Um, we want to offer as much as we can without costing our taxpayers to, um, too much. Next up on the calendar is the township's popular Boo Bash event. Families are invited to take part in some Halloween fun on Friday, October 14th 
beginning at 5.30 p.m. at the Orient Center. Pre-registration is required and space is limited. For more information, visit orientparks.com. When the fall weather arrives, classic car owners start putting away their babies for the winter. One local car dealership invited cruisers to enjoy one last big event before the cars go into hibernation. On Saturday, September 17th, dozens of classic cars, muscle cars, and hot rods gathered at Galling Butte GMC in Orient Township, Michigan for the final car cruise of the season. Each Galling cruise benefits a local charity, and approximately $10,000 has been raised in 2022 for organizations like the Orient Veterans Memorial, Miracle Field, and the Police Department's Shop with a Hero program. The Galling Super Cruise closed out the season offering music, food, and raffle prizes with proceeds benefiting the Orion Lighted Christmas Parade. This year our theme is uh, Kids in Candyland. We again are hoping it will be the biggest parade, lighted parade in the state of Michigan. You can register online or on our Facebook page to uh, get on. You can start registering anytime you want. Uh, we'd love to have the parade. In fact, I don't know if you saw it or not, Joe, but we are in the process from the uh, lumber yard, the Knowles family, they donated their train. Uh, so we painted the caboose and the other two cars. Uh, Rob Cavanaugh got this going for us. So my wife and I next weekend will be painting that. That'll be the parade. We're bringing a tradition back to the parade. We want everybody in the parade or come to the parade. It's, we're doing the same route. In case if you've heard different, we're doing the same route. Uh, and we want people to enjoy it. We want to kick off the season that way. The other thing I want to mention is that the night before we have, here at Gollings, we have our Holly Jolly Folly, which is the main fundraiser for the uh, Orient Lighted Parade. We get 400 people in the dealership. It's a buffet dinner with uh, beer and all the beer and wine you can drink, a, a cash bar. And we'll have a band there you can dance all night. It goes from 6.30 to 11, but I don't think we've ever stopped at 11 that I know of. On the evening of Saturday, September 17th, Ed's Broadway Gift and Costume in downtown Gorion was a gathering place for the ninth annual Zombie Walk. Several people arrived early to have some gory makeup applied. As the sun went down, approximately 50 creepy characters could be seen loitering at Flint and Broadway, attracting the attention of pedestrians and drivers passing by. <laughs> At 8 p.m., the zombie horde began their march across Flint Street toward the first stop of the night, Pork and Pint Restaurant located on Broadway Street near Chadbolt. Well, we uh, started out as a birthday party for me. It's my birthday, September 13th. And then um, we just decided that Kathy asked me what I wanted for my birthday, and I said, well, why don't we do a zombie walk? And so that's how it all started. We just put it together and... We raise money for the Christmas Parade group, and uh, you know it's a lot of fun. After food and drinks at Pork and Pint, the group staggered on and lurched through the downtown area. The final stop of the night was the American Legion Post 233. Participants also took part in a poker run with a 50-50 prize, going to the person with the best poker hand. The event acts as a fundraiser for the Orion Parade Group, who organizes the Lighted Christmas Parade each year. To me, I think the Christmas Parade's a real core event, you know, for the village, just like the Dragon on the Lake, just like the Jubilee, just like the Flower Fair, and I think those are just really important, important parts of, you know, of the community. I mean, they help make Lake Orion what it is. The Orion Light at Christmas Parade is scheduled to take place on Saturday, December 3rd, with the Holly Jolly Folly planned for the night before at Galling Buick GMC. If you have any raffle prizes you'd like to donate, call Bill Kokinas at 248-802-5521 to make arrangements. For more information, visit orionlightedparade.com. The village of Lake Orion has a long and fascinating history. Many buildings in the area date back to the late 1800s. One local historic church recently celebrated a major milestone. On the morning of Sunday, September 18th, dozens of congregants from Lake Orion United Methodist Church gathered at the intersection of Lapeer and Flint Street for the start of a procession that celebrated the 150th anniversary of the church. The cornerstone was laid in 1872 and the church was dedicated on June 14, 1873 on the property currently occupied by AutoZone 
but in 1901, the church was moved to its present location due to the close proximity of the railroad. On Sunday, the current congregation came together to recreate that event using a miniature replica of the church. Oh, it's great to see everyone, and we were so fortunate to be able to get a hold of um, so many past pastors. We have seven pa past pastors here today, and um, that's absolutely wonderful um, because there are a number of us who are a little older, and um, it's, it's a kind of a reunion at, at a real appropriate time at 150 years. <laughs> The interesting part about this church is that it always just wasn't a church people came to to praise God. It has always been like a community center also and always outreach into the community supporting everybody. Following the ceremony outside, the congregation moved inside for a 10 a.m. church service and a harvest meal after the service. For more information, you can visit LakeOrionUMC.org. If all goes according to plan, the landscape of Lake Orion may be changing drastically over the next few years with proposed major developments on the shores of the lake. Residents have already seen changes over the past several years, including new residential and commercial construction, including brand new businesses. On Thursday, September 15th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce and Lake Orion DDA gathered at 214 South Broadway to celebrate the official grand opening of the collective a new business that occupies the third floor of the building and offers a spectacular view of the lake. One, two, three! Well, first of all, I'm from here, so it's absolutely amazing. Uh, we love, love this community. The people, um, it's such an amazing atmosphere. Everyone in downtown area seems to get along really well, so we, we had to make it here. It had to be here. The atmosphere, but not only that, our view is incredible here. I don't know if it gets any better. <laughs> the collective is actually made up of three businesses, Elevate, Flawless, and Skin Edit, which began serving the community almost one year ago. Jason Courtney owns Elevate and describes the services they provide. So basically we're regenerative preventative medicine. We do everything from uh, HRT, which is hormone replacements. We do massage therapy. We do IV infusion for vitamins, for wellness, health, and energy. Um, and we also have a whole line of facial plastic where we do uh, Botox, uh, fillers, we do uh, uh, IPLs, all kinds of cool stuff. For more information on each of the businesses that make up the collective, visit thecollectivemichigan.com. And finally, the Lake Orion's Dragons varsity football season has seen its shares of ups and downs. The team stumbled out of the gate, losing their season opener to Utica Eisenhower, but then regrouped and won their next two games against Oak Park and Oxford. The Dragons returned home to host Rochester Adams, who always proves to be a worthy opponent. Lake Orion Dragon football team is looking to continue their winning ways after back-to-back -back wins against Oak Park and Oxford. On September 16th, the Rochester Adams Highlanders came into Dragon territory to take on Lake Orion. Adams is a force to be reckoned with, and Lake Orion would have to bring their A game to defeat the state final runner-up just a year ago. Right away, the Dragons made it tough on themselves as on the first play of the game, T.R. Hill fumbles on a quarterback draw and put Adams into the red zone immediately. Adams capitalized on the Lake Orion mistake as Parker Pico threw a touchdown pass to Tate Pico for the first four of the game. The defenses stiffened up for a bit until late in the first, where Adams kicked a 41-yard field goal to extend the lead to 10 for the Highlander. Lake Orion finally responded as on their first play of the following drive, Billy Roberson ran for an 80-yard touchdown. Then again, on their following drive, Roberson would do it again, this time for 85 yards and give the Dragons the lead 14-10. Adams would get another field goal to be within one point of the Dragons, and then with 30 seconds left in the half, Tate Pico would score his second touchdown of the night, this time on the ground, giving Adams the lead back 20-14. This momentum going into the half continued into the second half as Adams would run away with this game as Park, Parker Pico ran for a touchdown and threw two more to Brady Prescorn. The nail in the coffin was when Pico and Prescorn connected on a fourth and 30 touchdown giving them 42 to 14 lead. Lake Orion would get another late touchdown in the fourth to bring their score to 21 and that would be the final score as Adams would win 42 to 21. From Dragon Stadium, this is Joey Tysick reporting for ONTV Sports. Thanks, Joe. The Dragons rebounded from that heartbreaking loss and traveled to Stony Creek where they came away with a 24-14 victory. Next up, the team travels to West Bloomfield to take on the Lakers, then return home to host the Clarkson Wolves for homecoming. 
And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.